Hi everyone and welcome back to Waterhouse Ford. It's been a couple of weeks but um, I think in our last video, the last couple of videos, we, we finished off the, the two, uh, essentially the spindles and the front axles uh, for, the, for the Ferguson. Um, now there's been a lot of um, problems as you know, I'm sure most of you are very aware in terms of getting parts, um, not just tractor parts but any number of things, you name it, there's a shortage, right? Um, and that's, you know, that's not, um, I don't think it's unique to the UK. Obviously, Brexit has had some impact, but actually, I think there just is, there are problems globally. Um, anyway, uh, look, the good news is that we've managed to get, I believe, all the parts now that we need in order to finish off the front axle. The main thing I was waiting for uh, was the axle pin. Um, <laughs> weirdly enough, I mean, it's a straightforward, relatively simple part, um, but obviously, you know, I'm sure that the manufacturers are prioritizing components that are needed for more important things than old vintage Ferguson tractors. Makes perfect sense to me. You know, we've got a will to feed um, and all that sort of thing. So I'm sure, you know, for all the farmers out there who need uh, parts for their tractors in order to actually produce the food that we need to eat, you know, all you know, all credit due to them. So, but anyway, listen. The good news is we've managed to find one now, um, and more importantly, I think that we've now got everything that we need uh, essentially to put this thing together. The final job, um, really, just before we start putting it together, is really well. I've had to clean up the main beam, uh, the front axle beam, the the main part that pivots, uh, and then that the axle pin goes through. Um, I've cleaned that up, uh, it's busy, I've painted it, or well at least I've primed it, put a primer on it, uh, and it's busy drying at the moment. So I'm hoping by the time I need it, by the time we get to that, uh, it'll be dry, the paint will be dry, and we'll be able to carry on. Um, but look, in this video I'm going to quickly run through the parts that we've got. Um, we'll have a quick look at the, 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 um, all the different components, and then essentially we'll, and I'll also talk you through how I'm going to do this. Now, if you remember when we took all this apart, we had the front axle completely removed from the tractor and it was flopping all over the place. It was very difficult to work with. I don't intend to put it all back together like that and then have it flopping around and then marry it back to the tractor. I don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm going to try basically building the axle onto the tractor. So in other words, Put the first kind of you know the main beam on, uh, not the main beam, the um, the carriage for the main beam. Put that on. Put the main beam in. Get the axle pin in, and then add the two spindle um, uh, on you know, two spindle assemblies on either side. Um, and I'm hoping that way uh, <laughs> it'll be a little bit more manageable. It won't be flopping around and uh, you know potentially falling on my foot and breaking a toe or something silly like that. Anyway, so look, that's uh, yeah, that's what this video is going to be about. We'll see how far we get. I don't know whether I'm going to get through all of it today or in in, you know, in one video. We'll just see how we go, and then. Um, but so if it needs to be two videos, then obviously I'll split it, and uh, we'll carry on in the next one. But um, good, here we go. Okay, well look, here we go. That's um, as you can see the two uh, axle sub assemblies. Um, now completed. So again, in our last video, you saw us reassembling these. Uh, first the spindles and then the hubs. Uh, those are now completely done. Uh, and of course, we've got the main, uh, the main, uh, what's it, the, the the carriage, I guess, for the axle and the bolt onto the front of the tractor. So uh, obviously, for the Eagle Art, you'll notice that the main central beam is missing, as I've just said. That is, uh, that's our side drying. We've just painted it uh, or given it a, a prime. Now, I ran out of this primer uh, and I've used, I've had to use a different one and unfortunately it's a slightly different colour, slightly different grey, but it's more of a silver. Uh, but I guess we'll just have to live with that. Anyways, so look, that's the, um, the bits that we've been, you know, that we've got ready there. So now let's have a look at the, uh, shall we say, the new bits. Um, now look, we've been through this, oh that's upside down, hang on, we've been through this one before but we'll just quickly uh, go over it again. So this is the bush, 
for the for the axle uh, for the axle pin that again needs to go into the main uh, beam uh, part number is A six three eight four zero and uh, we've had that one for a while but as I say we've been waiting for the pin which we'll have a look in a minute then we've got the two uh, front radius rod or the, the bolt kit for the two uh, the bolt kit for the front radius rod, uh, which comes with all the nuts and washers and whatever else that you need. Uh, so that's A68786. And hopefully we'll get to that soon. And then we've got the, the swept axle bolt kit, it's called, uh, which is A68151, uh, which again gives you the four bolts and the corresponding nuts and washers that you need to connect the what's essentially the um, the spindle assembly to the main beam uh, which we'll come to right so that's that one and then more recently we've had if I can get it open here we go um, we've had a RAV the axle pin so that's uh, A67677 and um, that looks like a very nice piece, yep, so that's the pin and we also have been waiting for the, the steering joint kit, so this is basically the front and the back, the left and the right, um, essentially ball joints. Uh, for for the steering arms, that'll be probably the last thing that we do um, as we as we're going through this. But nevertheless, they were um, also um, we struggled to get those, but we have now finally got them. So, yeah, did I give you the part number on that? That's A six eight two eight two, and that gives you, as I say, left and right, both the front and the back um, ball joints. So. Um, you can buy them individually if you don't need uh, the whole set, of course, but um, obviously we, we needed the whole one and it's, it does actually work out cheaper to, to get them uh, to get the set than to buy the individuals. So um, just uh, if, you are, if you do need all of them, you might as well get the set. Anyway, so look, that's, um, that's all the bits that we're going to use, hopefully. Um, I'm now going to get set up and uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to bolt the 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 main bracket to the front of the tractor we'll get that all sorted out and then we will um, hopefully the main beam will be dry by then and we'll get the bush in then we'll put it into the main into that bracket and get the um, axle pin in get that all uh, greased up nicely etc and we'll just go from there so um, yeah let's see how we get on okay so we're around the front of the engine here now now before we bolt the front, the, uh, the the kind of the bracket on here, don't forget you've got four bolts that need to go in at the bottom here. You can see there's one, one hole there, one there. Let me zoom in a bit. Hopefully you can see that there now. So there's one there, one there, and then two over here. And they basically just hold this. They 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 hold this. Um, backing plate that sits behind all the timing gear and bolt that all the way through as well so we'll quickly pop those in they're just uh, four little essentially uh, bolts they, they take a half inch um, or a socket Annoying. Um, now I left these off because I couldn't quite remember if anything else bolted on the bottom here but there really isn't anything that can bolt on there so um, uh, I know I'm good to uh, put these in there Make those nice and tight. Okay, there we go. Now there's one little thing we need to do, which is to um, just sort out this lock tab on the main um, pulley nut. So uh, basically just going to bend that over. So let's do that quickly. a little chisel here. 
go. And then a punch. Uh, not a great punch, but... Uh, Right, so that lock tab is on. That um, that nut's not going to come loose, and the pulley is now nice and tight. So, okay, right, we're ready to put the uh, bracket back on. Let me uh, sort the camera out again. Okay, so look, the bolt, the uh, the bracket bolts on these four bolts here, the main ones, and then there's two that go on the sump. Now. It's worth noting that the two bolts for the sump are different lengths. Uh, here we go. So you see we've got obviously a long one and a short one. The long one is probably about an inch and a half. And the little one is about an inch and a quarter maybe. Something like that. Um, have a careful look. What you will find is that this uh, body on this side is fatter than on this side. And so obviously the longer bolt goes on the left hand side as I'm looking at the front of the tractor and the shorter one goes on the right hand side. So just make sure that you've got those two um, correctly organized. Otherwise it's pretty straightforward. And uh, I think you can see, just check the camera. Yeah, you can see that. Okay. So, I think I'm going to um, now these big bolts. They've got you got two flat washers and one spring washer for each of them. And um, hold on, put it. Just put one there, I think. And we'll get this frame up and on onto that one. In fact, I'm going to put the other one on the other side so that I don't have to hold it the whole time. There we go. Okay. Now, I just want to check if I've got that. Yeah, I've got the washer the right way. And then uh, put a flat washer on. It's interesting. It. Um, can't fit there. This one here is a little bit smaller. There we go, let's try that one. And then you've got a spring washer and a nut.
Okay, so, right, I've sorted the bottom ones out. Um, so, you can see what I, hopefully you can see what I mean here. These bolts are sticking out quite a long way, but uh, anyway, that's fine. Um, so look, I'm going to tighten these up. I've tightened the bottom ones. I'm going to do these, but uh, before I carry on, I just wanted to t mention about, so, obviously the bush, or the, the main beam now comes in here, right? and that there's a bush in that and then you've got the axle pin needs to push through here and it needs to obviously meet at the back there now you'll remember when we took these took this out when they took us apart that, that was really really tough to get that axle pin out i mean it was as tough as it was expected to be put it that way now i'm taking a chance here i'm taking a chance that the new one is going to fit without quite as much effort and that I'm going to be able to get it in without needing to use the pre the um, hydraulic press. Um, and in theory, you should be able to do that because reading the manual, the Ferguson manual, they talk about removing this pin with the with this all in situ. So, and indeed putting it back. So, I'm taking a bit of a chance, and I'm hoping that this isn't all for nothing, and that I'm not going to land up having to take it all of, all apart again. But I'm hoping that you can actually get the pin in without um, putting it in the press. And it's interesting because that axle pin obviously has a lobe in it and there's a bolt that goes in at the front here. Now I wonder, I'm, I'm not 100% certain, I don't know for sure at all, but I wonder whether that it might be designed actually to help you pull the pin in as well. I might be clutching at straws here, so I'm not entirely sure. But um, anyway, I'm quietly confident that I'll be able to get this pin in without, um, without too much hassle. Anyway, so yeah, I just wanted to mention that before I go any further and before any of you wonder why I haven't, um, why I haven't thought about that. I have thought about it. I'm taking a chance and um, I, I think it's a calculated, a calculated risk, shall we say. So uh, anyway, right, let's get these... Um, get these bolts tightened up and um, and then we'll be done with that part of it and we can move on and see whether my gamble pays off or not so let's get this top one tightened up Look, these are big bolts, they need to be tight, but I mean, I'm not going to go mental on them either. I just want it to be firm. We'll do the bottom one, see if it'll go without turning. Yep, that's fine. Okay. And do the other side. Now with the other side to tighten, I'm actually lifting, and of course, this tractor is just standing on axle stands. Um, I'm not that strong, but I did hear one of the axle stands make a bit of a noise a minute ago, so I'm just going to be cautious because I don't want to unsettle everything. enough um, I could always retarten them again once the tractors on its on its four tires but um, right so that's uh, so good so fa so far so good I think okay so moving on to the main axle beam you can see we've cleaned it up We've given it a base coat um, of gray and we've also you'll notice that I put a wooden bung in the uh, the, hint, the hole where the bush and the, and the axle pin goes and that's really because I just didn't want to get any paint in there. It already cleaned inside there and I just didn't want to have any paint in there so I've covered that up whilst we were painting. Now so basically the first thing we need to do is get that out and then we need to get the bush in there 
and um, and then this can actually go onto the tractor. So uh, yeah, let's get on with that. So there you can see we've got a nice finish inside there. That's all, as I said previously, nice and clean. Now this is the side that's got the chamfer uh, to help the um, the bush in. Um, so we're actually gonna we're gonna press it in that way, which is perfectly logical, right? Doing it the other way, it would be very difficult to get this properly supported for pushing the the bush in. Now you'll remember the um, the bush that we got. Uh, from Anglo, so that's uh, A63840 and again this is the I want to say the traditional bush, there is a an alternative bush which has a little bit more meat on it um, it's, it's, you know, it's a lot fatter and it has a shoulder on it um, and the idea is that you you turn this hole bigger and you push that in and then you put a uh, you drill through and you put a grease nipple on um, and inside that it also has a channel for the grease and basically what that means is you can then uh, grease this this um, joint um, now we're not going to do that I wanted it's still an option but I wanted to I suppose go with the original and um, and just see how it how it is in use now the idea is that you um, you keep this well lubricated. Um, you can, in theory, remove the axle pin uh, and clean it up and 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 keep it oiled uh, as part of your regular maintenance on the tractor. Um, and I want to see whether by doing that we can actually keep this uh, both the axle pin and the bush in good order, such that the axle pin can be removed without uh, too much hassle. It's an experiment. I just want to see whether whether the original thought and the original design actually uh, holds true. Anyway, so look, we we uh, we're going to push that in there. I'm I'm sort of tempted to try and do it with without using the press. It feels like it wants to go in. Um, I'm I'm thinking that we can probably just you know, obviously oil it up and then um, knock that in with. Um, with a bit of wood and a, and a rubber, ma I mean a, a wooden mallet, etc., um, without too much hassle. But um, obviously, if it starts to get too too tight, then we'll move over to the press and uh, we'll press it in with with that. So um, I'm just going to get set up and then we will do. We'll, we'll give it a go. Okay. So the first thing, obviously, is to get some oil on here, um, all the way around. You want this um, to be? I have oiled inside the, um, the 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 frame. Now I've got a lot balancing on this table, so it might um, it might fall off. But anyway, we'll see how we go. Right. So we've got a piece of wood. Just want to make sure that that's nice and firm. That's going in nicely. And there you go. That's um it can go a little bit more, so we'll um try and give it a bit more. So I'm going to get the um, get the old bush and um, try and push that in a bit more. So there's the original bush, and hopefully that will stay on.
it's just about in I think yeah look I'm gonna leave it at that I'm happy with that Let me just get a cloth Okay. Got all the rust coming out of the old bush there, but uh, let's just get rid of that. There you can see from the other side, it's not quite flush. But and I mean, in theory, we could go a little bit more. Yeah, let's go a little bit more, actually. Another, probably another millimeter or so. Yeah, that's probably it there. There we go. There we are. Now that's flush on the back. Possibly even slightly proud. Not just tap try and tap that back a bit. Okay, I'm happy with that. Right, so the next job is to uh, move over to the tractor and um, see if we can get the axle pin in. Okay, so of course this is a swept back axle, so we know that that goes that way with the, uh, the axle facing or heading back. So that goes in there. Of course what we need now is the um, is the actual axle pin and the bolt that holds it in. Okay so we've got the uh, axle pin that's part number eight sorry A67677 so 67, 67, 7. And um, again, looks like a pretty well manufactured piece. It's, um, see this one does actually have the hole in it for, you know, to let the grease in. And in fact, you could um, quite easily just pop some oil in there with the with the oil um, can to oil that bush. I'd never noticed that before. But um, interestingly, this one has um, uh, looks like keyways on the side um, on the inside. I'm not sure what that's about, but um, yeah. Anyway, there you go. So look, that obviously goes through there and. It's not going to be straightforward. We are going to have to give it a bit of a tap, but let's see how we go. Now, one of the things you've got here, what you've got going on, is you've actually got two, on this hole, you've actually got two components. There's this plate here, which is separate from this frame. And I think the pin actually gets hung up on yeah, it, it's probably getting hung up on that. I mean, in theory, I could polish that hole and see whether I could get that a bit smoother. Um, I suppose the other thing to check is how does the pin feel in that bush? See that? That'll go in no problem. I wonder... Let's just uh, 
Yeah, so it's definitely that the hole in the main frame, the hole in here seems fine. Um, I can't test the back hole without actually getting it all the way through. I'm going to polish this hole um, before we go any further. I won't film that, but um, I do think that, that that is going to hang up as we, as we try and push that pin in. Okay, I've uh, I just cleaned that up with a, a little drum sander uh, that fits in the drill. It's a really neat cool tool that actually I've got a set and it comes with um, you know different sizes, but um, certainly very useful and handy for this type of thing. But you can see now that pin slides in there. It's uh, yeah, it's tight, but it's, it slides in, which is what we're looking for. Right, so I put the uh, axle beam back in. What I'm going to do is put a little spread of oil on that surface that we've just sanded now. Just to uh, coat that. Similarly, I'm going to put a bunch of oil on the bush. that and of course on the pin itself okay get that nicely spread all over. And there we go. Okay. So now I can get the axle back in there. Get the uh, pin started, just like so, and then and there you go. As easy as that, and of course, like I say, the uh, the idea and the design. Yeah, the idea that I'm looking for here is to be able to do that when the whole tractor is assembled, obviously supporting the under the engine and supporting the the axle, getting it to neutral um, pressure on the pin, and then you should be able to pull that pin, clean it up, polish it, put it back, you know, oil it, put it back, etc. But anyways, that now. We can put that bolt in, and somewhere I have a socket. And we can tighten that up. going into the back frame which it only just touches by the way it only just goes into there we go that's nice and tight and there we've got our axle which can move backwards and forwards now obviously the radius arms determine exactly where it sits but more importantly, it can move side to side. And you've got limits on the frame over there, and again on that side. Okay, well look, I think I'm gonna leave this video here. Um, 
it's, uh, it's getting late in the day so I'm going to stop there and on the next video we will start putting the, um, the stub axles on um, the, the, the spindle frames to complete the front axle but, um, getting exciting now right uh, well listen everybody thanks for watching thanks for um, uh, you know, continuing to follow it um, I really can't uh, say how amazed I am really at how many of you are interested in our little project and uh, put up with uh, our, um, our progress and sometimes lack of progress it uh, we've, again the channel has recently passed a little milestone we achieved a thousand subscribers um, just over a month ago uh, which is absolutely astounding you know when we started out with this thing we really didn't think that would go it would be anything like this so again thank you to all of you um, you know let's not stop there if you know of anybody who's interested in this type of project or these tractors or, or anything like that please do recommend the channel to them and um, if you haven't already subscribed then of course I encourage you to do that it helps the channel dramatically um, we now with a thousand subscribers we can actually monetize the channel which means that we get a small uh, sort of revenue from YouTube and in particular from advertisers on YouTube and that just helps obviously the Anglo sponsorship helps dramatically with uh, the supply of parts but there's all the other costs associated uh, with you know obviously this restoration and more importantly with the channel itself so it is something that we've been looking forward to um, and hoping of course to achieve uh, now that we've achieved that of course you know onwards and upwards from here I guess but once again thank you to all of you who have subscribed for those of you who haven't yet please do and of course you know we really appreciate it uh, when you watch uh, adverts as well it does it really does help the channel so um, obviously I don't want you spending half your life watching adverts but just one now and again will be will be hugely beneficial to to us and to the channel so thank you very much um, once again thank you very much for watching and uh, hope that you all have a good week and of course we'll see you on the next video Cheers for now.